Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, uh, we're going deep on Andre Agassi's autobiography. Open? Open? Yeah. You know, this is not your typical sports story, though. It is not. It's raw. Yeah. It's honest. And it's... Uh, it's kind of brutal. It's packed with setbacks and struggles that can make even the toughest competitor just crumble. Yeah. It's interesting because he achieved so much. He did. But like you were saying, it all came from these struggles. Yeah. What's fascinating about Agassi is that his monumental achievements, you know, all those victories, they were really forged in the fires of some pretty intense personal struggles. Right. So in this deep dive, we're going to explore those struggles because they're the key to understanding how he emerged as a champion, both on and off the court. So get ready for some surprises because ah. uh, we're talking about a childhood dominated by a tennis ball watching dragon that his dad built. That's right. Teenage rebellion, complete with a mohawk, deliberately tanked matches. Oh, yeah. A journey that even includes crystal meth and a whirlwind marriage to Brooke Shields. And Tolstoy. Don't forget Agassi finding solace in those pages of Russian literature, alongside inspiration from figures like Nelson Mandela. It's wild. His path to greatness was anything but straightforward. So let's start with that childhood pressure. Okay. His dad's obsession with turning Andre into the world's number one tennis player created a really intense and frankly terrifying environment. Yeah. Imagine young Agassi facing this metal beast in his backyard, the dragon, spitting out tennis balls like fiery projectiles. Oh my gosh. Every single day. That was his daily reality. Wow. This relentless pressure from his father to hit harder, hit earlier, hit perfectly. It's no wonder he rebelled. I mean, he wasn't even allowed to play soccer, a sport he genuinely loved. Right. It was tennis, tennis, tennis 24-7. And that rebellious streak, from the Mohawk to those intentionally lost matches, it wasn't just teenage angst. It was a desperate attempt to take back some control over his life. Yeah, I could see that. From a life that felt completely out of his hands. And yet, even as he's rebelling, he's forming these relationships that will become crucial to his future success. He is. Like his friendship with Perry Rogers. Yes. This wealthy tennis obsessed kid who offered him a glimpse of normalcy right outside the pressure cooker of his home life they would sneak out for 7-eleven runs play video games indulge in all those things that a normal teenager craves right and then there's gil reyes yes he enters the picture as a trainer at the famed Bolletieri academy right but he quickly becomes so much more than that. Right. Reyes saw beneath that rebellious exterior, mm. and he recognized Agassi's incredible strength and potential. Mm. And he started nurturing those qualities, really laying the groundwork for a lifelong bond that would be essential to Agassi's ultimate triumphs. Yeah, and even back then, Agassi's pushing back against the system. Yeah. He even gets his ears pierced, much to his father's dismay. Oh, yeah. It really paints a picture of the dynamics of play. It does. Every step forward in his tennis career just seemed to be met with this intense internal struggle. Yeah, he wins Wimbledon, his first major tournament. Right. Achieves what most players only dream of, and he feels empty. Wow. It's incredible. Behind the dazzling smile and the trophies, there was a storm brewing. There was. That's the paradox of Agassi's story. Right. He reaches the pinnacle of success, yet he's grappling with this profound sense of emptiness, questioning his passion for the sport, realizing that victory doesn't automatically equal happiness. Wow. You can almost feel the pressure mounting, testing Agassi's limits at every turn, and then <sighs> boom, he gets hit with this debilitating wrist injury. This is where Agassi's journey becomes universal. He shows us that even with raw talent and unwavering determination, the road to success is rarely smooth. Right. A serious injury like that can make you confront your own mortality as an athlete, forcing you to grapple with the possibility that your career might be over before you're ready. It's a major turning point in his story, forcing him to question everything, his purpose, his motivation, even his identity as a tennis player. And this is where we see Agassi's resilience start to really shine. He could have easily just given up on tennis. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Instead, he digs deep, undergoes surgery, endures grueling rehab, refuses to let this injury define him. Wow. It's a testament to his inner strength and his unwavering determination to come back stronger. And his bond with Gil Reyes becomes even more crucial during this time, right? Absolutely. Reyes is his rock, his confidant, the one person who truly understands the battles he's facing, both physically and emotionally. And yet, even with Reyes' unwavering support, 
the comeback isn't easy, is it? No, it's not. He still faces setbacks, makes questionable decisions, grapples with frustration and self-doubt. Right. This is what makes Agassiz's story so relatable. You know, it shatters that myth of the perfect comeback, yeah. reminding us that even with immense talent and a super supportive team, the road to redemption is paved with obstacles and detours. Yes, yeah, like life just keeps throwing him curveballs. Exactly. And each challenge forces him to confront his weaknesses, reevaluate his motivations, and ultimately grow as both a player and a person. So this period of intense self-reflection is crucial to his eventual transformation. It's... So let's talk about another major turning point in his life. Yeah. His relationship with Brooke Shields. Okay. It starts as this whirlwind romance. Two superstars from different worlds colliding. You have these glamorous photos, the lavish wedding, this seemingly perfect couple. Right. But beneath the surface, there are cracks. Right. Fundamental differences in values and priorities. Yeah. And they become impossible to ignore. Agassiz talks about feeling increasingly disconnected from Brooke their lives moving in opposite directions. Yeah, it's a classic case of two people growing apart, but on a very public and intense stage. And remember, this is all happening while he's trying to manage his tennis career, deal with the lingering effects of his injury, and battle those inner demons we talked about. Oh, it's a recipe for disaster. There's this one scene in the book that really captures the tension in their relationship. Oh, yeah. Agassiz flies to LA to watch Brooke film an episode of Friends. Mm. She's licking another actor's hand as part of the scene. And Agassiz completely loses it. He storms out of the studio, consumed by jealousy and rage, drives all the way back to Vegas. That's a pivotal moment for him. He's realizing their lives are just incompatible, their dreams and aspirations no longer aligned. The illusion of the perfect couple just shatters. And his reaction is so explosive, he smashes all of his tennis trophies, trashes his house. It's like this symbolic destruction of his past achievements, this desperate attempt to erase the pain and frustration he's feeling. He's hitting rock bottom. Yeah. His marriage is imploding, his career is in turmoil, and he's lost in this haze of self-destructive behavior, even experimenting with crystal meth. It's a dark period for Agassiz, but it's also the catalyst for a profound shift in his journey. It is. The breakdown of his marriage, coupled with his ongoing struggles on the court, force him to confront some hard truths about himself. Right. He realizes he can't keep running from his problems. Yeah. That he needs to take responsibility for his actions and make some serious changes. He starts to see his setbacks, not as failures, but as opportunities for growth. Exactly. This is where Agassiz's story transcends the typical athlete bio. It becomes a testament to the human capacity for reinvention. Right. For finding strength in the face of adversity. Yeah. For using our pain to fuel a more meaningful and authentic life. So he begins to prioritize his own well-being, reconnect with the things that truly matter. And his relationship with Gil Reyes deepens, providing him with that unwavering support and guidance. Yeah, he needs it to navigate this turbulent period. And he starts to explore his spiritual side, finding solace in unlikely places like church services, right. conversations with a pastor. Yeah, it's a search for meaning beyond the world of tennis, a yearning for something deeper and more fulfilling. And this newfound sense of purpose starts to manifest in his commitment to helping others. Yes. He establishes the Andre Agassi Foundation for Education, pouring his time and resources into creating opportunities for underprivileged children in Las Vegas. It's a powerful example of turning personal pain into something positive, of using his platform to make a real difference in the world. It speaks to his evolving sense of empathy and his desire to give back to the community that shaped him. And then there's his encounter with Nelson Mandela, a figure he deeply admires. Yeah, that meeting with Mandela isn't just a fanboy moment. It's a profound experience that reinforces Agassiz's belief in the power of forgiveness, resilience, and using your voice to fight for justice. It's like all these pieces start to come together. Yeah. The physical training, the mental fortitude, the spiritual exploration, the commitment to philanthropy, and it all culminates in one of the most remarkable comebacks in sports history. It does. He wins the French Open in 1999, completing the career Grand Slam. Wow. A feat achieved by only a handful of players. It's a moment of pure redemption, not just for Agassi the tennis player, but for Agassi the man. But his journey isn't over yet. He still has more challenges to face, more lessons to learn, and one of the most important chapters of his life is about to begin. We left off with Agassiz at this incredible high point in his life. You know, he achieved the career Grand Slam, found this new sense of purpose through philanthropy, and seems to have finally quieted some of those inner demons. Yeah. But the story's not over yet. 
No, it's not. This is where Agassiz's journey takes another fascinating turn. You know, it's not just about winning on the court anymore. Right. It's about finding that true fulfillment, that lasting happiness off the court. And that's where Stephanie Graff enters the picture. Yes. And their relationship is a complete departure from all the drama and turmoil of his previous marriage. It is. Their connection runs deeper. You know, they meet at the French Open, both at the top of their game. Right. But what really bonds them is the shared understanding of the pressure, the sacrifices that come with life in the spotlight. Right. They find solace in each other's company, a sense of peace and stability that Agassiz had been craving for so long. Absolutely. And their relationship blossoms into this deep and lasting love. Graf brings a sense of calm and joy to Agassiz's life, helping him heal from those past wounds and embrace a brighter future. It's really beautiful to see how their love story unfolds. They support each other's careers, challenge each other to grow, and eventually start a family together. Yes. And becoming a father is transformative for Agassiz. Yeah. He talks about how fatherhood softens him, teaches him patience, and reveals a depth of love he never knew he had. He even names his son Jaden Gill after his beloved trainer. That's right. It's such a powerful testament to the profound impact Ray has had on his life, shaping him not only as an athlete, but as a man. Absolutely. It's clear that Agassiz finds immense joy in his family life. You know, it's a source of strength and stability that allows him to continue competing at a high level while also nurturing this fulfilling life off the court. But even with all this newfound happiness, Agassiz's journey isn't without its final challenges. His body starts to break down. Oh, yeah. You know, those relentless years of training and competition taking their toll. He faces chronic back pain, struggles with injuries, and knows that his time as a professional player is coming to an end. But he doesn't give up, does he? No, he doesn't. Instead of giving into despair, he approaches this final chapter with that same grit and determination that had defined his entire career. He adapts his training, focuses on pain management, finds ways to compete, even as his body is betraying him. It's a testament to his resilience. Yeah. His absolute refusal to let age or physical limitations dictate his destiny. And his final match at the U.S. Open in 2006 is an emotional roller coaster. It is. He's playing against this young, up-and-coming star, and everyone knows this is Agassiz's last dance. The crowd is on their feet, cheering him on every point. It's the celebration of his career, his legacy, his incredible journey of setbacks and triumphs. And even though he loses the match, mm -hmm. he walks off that court with his head held high, knowing he gave everything he had. It's a fitting end to a career marked by both brilliance and vulnerability. Agassiz's story is a powerful reminder that setbacks and struggles are just an inevitable part of life, even for those who seem to have it all. It's how we respond to those challenges, how we learn and grow from them, that truly defines us. Exactly. He shows us that true strength lies not in avoiding hardship, but in embracing it, using it as fuel to become stronger, more resilient, and more compassionate human beings. Agassiz's journey, from that pressure-filled childhood to his triumphant comeback and his ultimate embrace of family and philanthropy, is an inspiration to us all. It's a story about the power of the human spirit to overcome adversity, to find meaning even when faced with suffering, and ultimately to leave a lasting impact on the world. It's a powerful story. So the next time you're facing a setback, remember Andre Agassi. Remember his struggles, his resilience, his unwavering determination to keep pushing forward even when the odds were stacked against him. And remember this, even though he became a tennis legend, he was never just a tennis player. He was a man who dared to be vulnerable, to embrace his flaws, and to use his platform to make the world a better place. That's the true measure of his greatness, and it's a legacy that continues to inspire us long after his final match.